Blue Striker and Jewel met in bracket, but as we, we're going to be getting right into this game here, and this is a matchup that at its it's going to be interesting. All right, I'm gonna, I'm, I didn't want to interrupt you in that amazing story, actually, because that was great. But actually, Sonic, uh, what do you think about this? Sonic, uh, Sonic, uh, Sonic Robin. Uh, it's the, the fact that Sonic has some of the best speed and, you know, in that case, can just kind of rush down. Robin uh, is going to be very relevant. On the other hand, you know, Robin has ways to uh, <laughs> duel as a player, first of all. It's fantastic. And then he has ways to shut down the horizontal. Uh, you know, with arc fire to just deny an entire space, or those quicker thunders to just snipe him when he's think you know Sonic is trying to get in. But at the moment, we have a pretty even game here. There's a very solid idea that uh, Sonic is a very well-rounded character, has very little losing matchups, and well, no, nah, he has a lot of even matchups. You know, he's very well-rounded, and he's he has a lot of uh, rush down. He has a lot of a lot of ways to get in. You know, even on protected characters like Robin. Uh, he's still finding a way to go through, you know? 73%, uh, 79% for itself right there. Yeah, and <laughs> oh, oh. Jewel taking the first stock, though. One thing about these two characters, respectively, is the fact that uh, Robin has a lot more... Oh. He's fine. Uh, okay. A lot more kill power, or at least reliable kill power. That oh, back right there, is yeah, one of those back yeah, strong, Chunky. but not able to finish it at this percent. And now we have Jewel surviving, and if he survives, he can do a ton of damage. Look at 35%. Oh, already 43. I don't think that neutral B was really good on Sonic's friend because it definitely was... Uh, the fire was already up. I don't, I don't know exactly what he was expecting from that. Oh, he's in a really bad situation now. Oh, I'm liking the fact he's using the aerial spin dashes. To, you know, we were talking about how, oh, Robin oh. denies all of this horizontal space. So the fact that he oscillates vertically like that is helping him get past... Uh, some of Jewel's walls, but at the same time, Ooh, wow, that's really smart right there, going for the dash attack, knowing that without Levin Sword, that was the kill option. Definitely, uh, right now, he didn't kill him at, uh, I think it was like at 100%, and now he's kind of suffering for it, you know? Definitely coming through yeah. with uh, Yeah, we saw that, you right, that back air earlier, almost did the job, but now it's like two minutes later, and he's still struggling to find this final hit. Yeah, I'm not sure. What exactly are, like, uh, Sonic's kill options? Uh, so he has up smash, he has forward tilt at very high percents. Like, now, forward tilt at the ledge will definitely do it, and I think that might be the option he's looking for here. Yeah, we're seeing him throw it out. Uh, beyond that, back throw at the ledge. I, I'm really surprised. Uh, that was kind of a little bit of a... Uh, I don't know, that DI was a little bit iffy, because they're really close to the blast zone, man. Alright. Oh, that's still not enough to do it. Alright, finally, okay. a okay. back air at 180. Thank, thank God. He finally has the stock on the map. There you go. He's still, uh, still a, a far way to go, but... Um. I don't know. At this point, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Jewel is just... And, like, that reverses that. Was that was really oppressive from Jewel's, actually. I, I did not see any position where Jewel's just was not at least some... Putting at least some sort of pressure on it. You know? Yeah, and it's one of those things where Jewel, as a character, is able to exert pressure from such a distance away. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can, oh, yeah. Yeah, we can, yeah, yeah. All right. We're going to do a quick mid-set caster swap. Don't worry about it so much. Um, so as we're moving into game two, Jewel taking game one in a pretty dominant... Uh, that was actually... No, that was very dominant two-stock. Low percent two-stock. The big sort of narrative point of that was the fact that Jewel took that first stock, and after that, Kamex could not kill him until about 180. And that's Sonic for you. If you're not the one with the lead, it's very hard to catch up. Sonic needs that early game advantage to stay relevant, especially when you're running around projectiles. You may be fast, but you're not faster than a wall for some reason. <laughs> I mean, have you ever run into a wall at high speed? It sounds like that's what's happening here. Going for the spike, I appreciate it. These back airs. Ooh, Ooh. and getting a second one anyway, but Sonic will make that back. Yeah, but about neck and neck in percent right now, a slight percent lead for Jewel, meaning that Chemex has a light reason, you no know, need to approach. And oh, once he has to approach, we're seeing that Jewel is able to throw out these little thunders. And Ooh, an interesting option coverage is like, you're going to stop right here and reverse down B. Does cover the rest of it. And he's trying to use up the uses of his sword. Let's see. Oh, nice neutral B to cover that option. Yeah, All right. right. Sonic at ledge. Let's see. 
Jewel using the, I love that, using the spring, finding his way around it. But Ooh, Town and City is going to get your stock early on the Blade Blast Zone, even to a Sonic Fair. And, you know, we have been saying earlier how, oh, Sonic needs that lead in order to stay relevant, where we are at prime relevance here. Kamek at only 91%. Surviving that Arc Thunder was huge for him. Well, he but needs to get out of here. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, that landing neutral is such a good combo, sir, Ooh. with these lower percents. And like that, in an instant, <gasps> Ooh, the take the spring? Oh, the spring? Oh, it's going to be bad. Back here, he's in a bad spot. That's it. I. No, nope, he's... Oh, and then the spike. Th this is where he wants to be, and now he just needs to either take the center or take each edge turn by turn. And it's just the the contrast between last game and this game. Jewel takes first stock, almost three stocks him. And now at this point, Kamek takes the first stock, almost getting the three stock in return. You have to appreciate the hard movement that both of these players are committing to right now. Jewel making excellent use of not just his toolkit, but his toolkit's backup plan. He's making these books and these empty swords look like real projectiles. Because for him, that's just a frame three out of shield option, so he'll just take those. And he's yeah, ooh, gonna get hit out for neutral being getting a little too in the face, but let's see if he'll choose to approach, and he is choosing to deal damage. Yeah, now one thing I want to just touch on before is the fact that at that second stock in particular, the edge guards from Kamex. The fact that Robin doesn't have a hitbox on the way up with from that up B means that he can go off stage and do some really, at the very least, huge amounts of damage and convert to a stock if it comes to that. This movement is next level. Jewel finally just take a second. Oh my goodness, he could not drift correctly in time. Not able to cover, but he is now just walling in. Kamek's showing a little bit of going in too hard. Let's see if he can keep up an actual set of pressure. Jewel's like, I got four minutes left. Let me take my time on him. Got good. Oh, is he going to catch him in the blast zone? No, up air, not what you see. F-Tilt taking yep. that game too. Con not as confidently, but pretty up there. I, I would call that a confident win, especially considering the fact he got almost swept in the last game. And it's worth noting that as Sonic, sometimes he can struggle to kill, but there are these certain thresholds where once a kill option becomes available to him and you have to worry about that on top of everything else, it becomes so much trickier. As soon as forward tilt near that ledge becomes a viable kill option, that's something that, you know, to play around that is so difficult. Um, and then also, you know, when back throw is available, when his throws. So, you know, it, yes, Sonic can sometimes struggle to kill, but at the same time, there's, as his kill options become available, it becomes so much harder, especially if you're playing from behind, to avoid every single one of them. And then look at it, and then we're getting into game three. Running it back to PS2, I agree, because these platforms are definitely just a helpful to you, and it'll give you time to activate shield up there. Every time Sonic jumps at you, you want to react. And you, ooh, let's see what he could do with this ledge pressure, and then he... See these spin dashes, and yeah. the hidden thing that makes this matchup so much harder is when the spin dash has invincibility. Saw it earlier, he spin dashed in game one through Robin's gentleman's jab and got him killed. These are these little details that make Sonic just such an annoying character if you don't understand the pressure with these approaching invincible moving hitboxes. Yeah, for the most part, though, I'm loving the platform movement from Kamex. Ooh, what a re... Like, yeah, that's something that Robin can do. Once Jewel picks up on your habits, your defensive habits that leave you open like that, Robin's punish game is so strong. He can kill you so, so early that that's going to be... Especially right now, the fact that Jewel is down by this much, which only 20%, but okay. Actually, now, now 1%. He's not down, but yeah. <laughs> We can see here, oh, nice waiting to the last second, maybe trying to bait out an option, but let's see, he's almost out of wind book, let's see if he can, ooh, that spring's gonna make it tough, he's out of, he ran out of wind tome on the way up, you hate to see it. Yeah, he, and he got the first part of wind, but not enough for the second, meaning that he was not able to recover right there. Uh, and doing alright, buddy? He wants to, I, I understand it if you're choosing to stall, especially, you don't want to instant snap ledge when you're at 100, so it's amount of time you spend off the level plus percent so if he grabbed that ledge immediately it would be basically a re-grab and he might get down smash so i understand stalling a little bit to get a little more invincibility it's kept them alive on the thunder the gentleman's not doing it at 110 ps2 counter pick working against him slightly but let's see again nair 
not doing it. Ooh, right. let's see second there. Yeah, great job with that edge guard. That sort of ledge pressure, something that for the most part, Jewel hadn't really gotten that much mileage out of, at least for the last two games. But right there, it helped him take that stock in a really pivotal moment because otherwise Kamex would run away with it just like he did in game two. We're seeing some really excellent shield pressure and shield defensive options that come in when you're stuck in these two characters. Jewel making Robin look like a fast character with all these B reverses, wave bounce, and setups. And Kamek's touching shield in the safest way possible, which you have to do when you have a smash attack sword that can be your aerials into uh, ridiculous out of shield options. Up air through platform, just taking a chunk out of him. Every percent matters. And caught him sleeping at the wheel. Yeah, and I was about to mention how, oh, the ledge has really been working out for Jewel lately, but one single reversal taking his stock, and this is even worse Ooh. than we saw before. He's down by quite a significant margin, and this is his last stock. We, we have about four minutes left on the clock, which is a lot of time. We most likely won't be seeing a timeout, but if Jewel decides to slow down just a little bit too much, that might actually become a relevant factor. That was... The, the movement between these two has been absolutely phenomenal. The way he crouched his up smash with his initial dash to push him in. I'm amazed up tilt was the response, but if I didn't know that was happening either, I would pick my fist as option. Nair gonna do it, can't DI out of that. No SDI for you. So let's see, now we're at one stock each, 65. He's got three and a half minutes if he wants to use them, but it looks like he's trying to take this out. Because if you give Jewel time to set up, and he's look, running low on every spell and book. And let's see if he can abuse that timeout. You can see it recharging down there. Oh, now he's losing fire. He barely just got thunder back. So let's see what he can make do with this. Oh, the pressure oh, on these there. platforms. It's, but at this point, like, look at the way that Jewel is down 107%. Forced into shield. You can see that the fear is starting to get to him. Recognizing the fact Ooh, that good Sonic's... Good back here. Yeah, the, that back here looking... Very nice as it puts him on the ledge. And just like that, he was not able to re-grab the, uh, the Levin Sword, removing, like as you said before, a frame three option. He was struggling in shields before. Having access to an item like that could have been really helpful. Well, let's see. We have another setup here. And he's going to forward smash him. Fantastic. Well-deserved pop-off. Oh, man. Some people like to say Sonic isn't a hype character, but it is the way.